sensation. Exactly. It's a nice That's a nice coincidence. Um, thank you. I mean, uh, it's a very good uh, introduction. I, uh, I can omit certain things that I need to say. Uh, my presentation is a preamble, basically, for an animation with music that I will show at the end of the presentation. So, ideally, let me find some you, Diego, or some people could sit more towards this area. So, if you want to move to this side, it would be great because it's, the presentation is basically about this video, this animation, the music. So, my presentation uh, is based on my experience reading this book. So, when I was reading The Logical Sensation, I was finishing a composition for ensemble that was called Kabawaku for Night Nine Musicians. And when I was reading this book, I found a language that helped me to uh, describe some of the musical ideas with uh, with a sort of more precise language. It's not it's not a precise language, but it, I could borrow it to describe an open phenomenon that happens in my pieces. So basically, uh, what I will do now, I will talk about the pictorial elements in, um, in Francis Bacon's uh, paintings, as Deleuze uh, named them in the, in the book of the Logical Translation. And to do that, I will actually use the whole. So uh, I, uh, it, it's a, 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 a very important uh, part of his work, the popes. Uh, they, most of them are based, uh, well, sorry, I'm going to name this one, I didn't write the name of the painting, it's Head 6, uh, from 1949. This is uh, the, the last painting of the Head series of, of Bacon. And I chose this painting to describe the pictorial elements because I, I believe that uh, in, in, with this painting I can really point out uh, all those elements clearly and show how they relate between each other in a clear way. So, these paintings of the popes are based on a painting of Velázquez. And what you said before is true because I read that he didn't see the actual painting uh, very late. I mean, he, he saw pictures of the painting, so most of these paintings are based on him watching the, the picture. Uh, but uh, it was, uh, this pope was a kind of obsession of Bacon. There are many, many, many paintings. There is even one in print. So if you're curious, there is one in this Mac. It's called the Figure Sitting. Um, and I will describe the, the, the pictorial elements from Bacon's painting. So the basic pictorial elements are the figure, which is the person, or the fact. The fact is a, is a term that Bacon uses very much to describe like the point of meaning of the painting, something that it's, it can have like a specific emotion, a, a clear definition. And in this case, in this painting, it is the body and the mouth that has the intensity of, of, the, of the painting. Then the place, that is the con what it's uh, a contour, uh, the, the, the surrounding of the figure, and then there is a large field that is a specializing material. So I will show the painting to describe this a bit further. So the fields are, are a uniform and motionless color. So these fields uh, have a structuring and a specializing material. And this doesn't mean that it's like a three-dimensional space. It doesn't represent as a whole or, or a physical space. They are, as, as Deleuze describes it, quote, they are not beneath, behind, or beyond the figure, but uh, these fields are strictly to the side of it, or rather all around it, end quote. And for Bacon, what is important is that these fields have like an equal role uh, with the figure and the contour of the painting. Bacon says, I try to make the shadows, referring to fields, as present as the figure. And then the place, in this case, I call it the cube, where it seems to be a cube in this case. Um, it is the surrounding contour, the, it's the place of exchange between the figure and the fields that are behind. 
um, and the, this, this place it's where the intensity of the mouth and that meaning uh, communicates with the fields and there is a mutual exchange as I just mentioned so the isolation of the mouth it's resonating in that layer that surrounds it and connects both sides in both directions the figure as mentioned earlier uh, in this case it's isolated and isolation uh, Bacon explains that it is to avoid the figurative the illustrative and narrative uh, character of the figure so he avoids having an, a, a story there is no relation there's no uh, like there's no story with the painting so he wants that these all fields resonate between each other in, in an equal way. In this case, I am interested in this painting uh, because the, the head also becomes the field. As you can see, the eyes of the painting are transitioning into the field. And that, again, destroys the three-dimensional quality of the field. So it becomes the body and the head becomes part of that field. And that again produces a resonance of the mouth within the other layers. The mouth concentrates most of the sensation of this painting, the meaning and the scream, that uh, agony that can be related to that open mouth. It's what resonates in the other fields. I experimented by I experimented covering the mouth and then the sensation of agony that the painting has sort of disappears and that resonate, resonance between the fields also disappears so it, for me, what interests me is like that point of intensity can only coexist with all those fields if the point of meaning disappears then the resonance sort of uh, disappear so what I did I, I was interested in this relation between the fields the contour and the and the figure and I translated it into music so for me the figure as you can see here in the, in the, in the figure above I just put a timeline uh, where I basically imagine the pictorial elements through time so, how did I relate the figure to a musical moment? Uh, because the figure has a definition in its expression, something we can recognize. Uh, we can feel a mirrored image with the mouth. We can feel that uh, human scream in it. And in music, that definition is more abstract. So, how, did I, how do I define a figure in my music? In the case of the piece that I wrote, it was a piano solo that it was like the axis in time of the musical piece and for me what was defining that figurative quality where I identify that as an axis is its convention that the piano solo refers to a memory of a tradition you can recognize the instrument and also in that moment of the composition there is a revelation of the musical material which is composed in both, in both directions of the piece. So, in the moment that figure appears, I am revealing all the information that composed the whole piece. So that's why I put the arrows in both directions, basically to describe that the composition departs from the figure and it starts to blur out in both directions. And that creates the idea of a transverse, of a transverse time. And the fields are an undefined material. Sorry. The fields are an undefined material that it's, it's not clearly uh, articulated, They're, it's more textural, and it resonates through time with the figure and not uh, independently. The place, it will be the surrounding music that transitions towards the figure. 
as you can see in this drawing. And then, when I related these uh, pictorial elements to a musical phenomenon, I related these uh, elements to also to the notion of a territory. So I see the figure as a point of order. Again, going back to Deleuze in, in more like his music, uh, his uh, text about music, the figure represents a point of order. That is my assured my, my point where I assure myself in a position that I am in space. The place is my territory, my territorial circle, like in the example of uh, the animal demarking its territory. So that's like the physical boundaries that correspond to my place. And then the fields. Uh, I'm calling here territorial, territorial opening, but these are connected to, again, to the line of flight that was mentioned earlier. So, the fields are, 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 the, are a layer that opens towards other territories and blurs the boundaries of the musical piece. So, for me, the territory uh, cannot be the territory is not real in the experience of, of music uh, and I only can talk about territory when I'm th making a theory about this experience. So, when I think of territory, I, I think that I can only think of separate realities and that's when I define the painting of Bacon as a territory, I'm separating my experience which actually defines the territory. So when I'm explaining how I feel that resonance, I'm separating it only in a theoretical way and the only way that I can encounter that painting or music is through an overlapping of my space with the painting. So there is a constant becoming in the, in the relation between me and the painting. This idea of having the painting as an overlapping reality and conjunction of different worlds, I also related to Jean-Luc Sennancy's theories of being singular plural, which is that coexistence is always coexistence, and that being is always being, and that being can only be experienced through encounter. So, in a way, Mancis theory also relates to the notion that it's impossible to think as a territory as a separate thing and basically through the idea of Jean-Luc Nancy's being with, the encounter with the painting is always a deterioralizing experience and it's in constant transformation so there is a multiplicity of worlds which are constantly overlapping and to finish uh, my speaking, to go to the music I just wanted to show us a short quote of Jean-Luc Nancy, which I think it relates very much to, to the painting of Head Six, where the mouth opens uh, itself outside of the borders of the painting, and the framing of the isolation actually creates a tension with everything around it, and what it's experienced is, instead of being a close relation with the painting, it's a tension that tries to escape the borders of the painting. And, I, and in this quote, I think it summarized the experience that also gave form to this presentation. So, isn't the space of the listening body in turn just such a hollow column over which a skin is stretched, but also from which the opening of a mouth can resume and revive resonance? So when I see this quote, I imagine also Jean Nancy seeing the painting and talking about this opening that happens because of this resonance within a painting that intends to be isolated, but that equal influence between all these layers also make a resonance outside of those borders. So I'm going to show the animation. And uh, if we could have a slide here also, it would be great. Is it possible to check?
Thank you, Mr. Gavanka. Any questions, comments? On the sexual experience? Yeah, I just wondered if this kind of thank you very much for the beautiful music and presentation. This uh, way of uh, dealing interpreting the visual arts that you sketched out from figure to axis and place to axis borders and so on. Have you applied that to other paintings or other works of visual arts in the same way? No, no, no this is the first time. Yeah. This is like I described in this presentation. It's a kind of experiment and I don't have any experience in animation. So I'm interested in, in doing a, a real, I mean, my problem when I did this presentation is that I thought it was very short, uh, the duration of the animation. Uh, I would like to work uh, as an art piece on this one. Of course, I tried to make it complicated, but it was more like I was trained in the presentation time. Yeah, yeah I would like to try it. So let me set up the video camera for the next session, but let's thank Miguel Ancel for it.